This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Most people in the UK think that they pay too much tax. Thanks to the recent national insurance freeze, the UK's tax burden is now at a 40-year high. But public services are still really struggling. However, the real problem here might not be the UK's tax burden, which isn't actually that high by OECD standards, but rather the way the UK's dysfunctional tax system works, or doesn't. So in this video, we're going to have a look at what's wrong with the UK system and how it might be fixed. So let's start by asking, what makes a good tax system? Well, broadly, a good tax system should be three things. Progressive, neutral, and effective. A progressive system is one that makes rich people pay more tax than poor people. While the right and left might disagree on how much more, the vast majority of people agree that rich people should pay at least a bit more. A neutral system is one that doesn't punish or reward certain types of behaviour. For example, a neutral tax system would not provide tax benefits to married couples. Even if most people agree that certain behaviours should be discouraged, i.e. we might be happy to tax smokers for various reasons, the best way to make a tax system fair is to make it apply equally. Again, different people will have different intuitions here. Using tax to influence how much sugar people consume could be seen as either a clever way to regulate public health or an infringement of personal liberty. But the gist is that a good tax system should avoid arbitrary discrimination. Finally, a good tax system should also be effective. In practice, this means a good tax system should be simple, conducive to productive economic activity, and bring in as much revenue as possible. Often there's trade-offs between fairness and effectiveness. For example, we might want to tax corporations more, but at a certain point, high taxes actually end up with less revenue because they discourage economic activity and corporations just move offshore, which is why corporation tax rises can actually reduce revenues. This is a concept in economics known as the Laffer curve, which basically says that there's an optimal point of taxation between zero and 100%. Unfortunately for us Brits, our tax system doesn't really tick any of these boxes. Now, we don't want to overstate this. No one has a perfect system, and the British one isn't the worst, but it's still pretty bad in certain aspects. First, it's not all that progressive, because it focuses on income rather than wealth. In other words, the UK system focuses on people's salaries rather than stuff like their stocks or their property. This is partly because wealth taxes are generally more difficult to implement than income taxes. But in practice, this means poorer people pay more tax, because people with less money rely more on income and don't have as much wealth as rich people. Now, the UK does have some quasi-wealth taxes, but they're not ideal. Capital gains tax, for example, which is the tax you pay on stuff like profits from trading stocks, was capped at 20% by George Osborne, despite the fact that this is the same as the lowest rate of income tax, and that the Treasury at the time told him that a 28% top rate would maximise revenue. Stamp duty, which is charged on the purchase of a property, is a sort of wealth tax, but it also incentivizes owners just to sit on their houses, which makes the property crisis worse. The UK's other big property-related tax is council tax, which takes the value of your house and uses this to put you on one of eight bands between A and H, which determines how much tax you pay. This is obviously nominally progressive, in the sense that you pay more if your house is worth more, but it doesn't really work like that for two reasons. First, it's calculated from house prices from 1991, and house prices have changed a lot since then. House prices in London have skyrocketed, but they've stagnated in other parts of the UK, like Liverpool, which means that Londoners are getting a better deal than Liverpudlians, even though they've seen steeper price appreciations. Second, capping the council tax at a maximum of £320,000 means that the super-rich, who might own a house worth many millions, pay the same council tax as a house in Liverpool that used to cost £321,000 in 1991, but has barely gone up in value. A great piece out this week in the New Statesman has found that council tax is actually pretty regressive these days, and that poorer areas pay more council tax relative to property prices. So you get the idea. The UK tax system doesn't tax wealth very progressively, and focuses unduly on income, which means that it fails to be truly progressive or neutral. But what about effectiveness? 
Well, unfortunately, the UK's tax system isn't particularly effective either. For starters, focusing on income over wealth discourages productive work while encouraging non-productive wealth accumulation, i.e. speculative investment in property. But even the UK's income tax system isn't particularly effective. While it might be progressive, it's way too complicated. For context, a progressive tax system should basically look like a diagonal line. As you earn more, your rate of tax increases proportionally. While the UK system tends upwards, it goes in a sort of squiggly line because there are so many exemptions and complications. For example, child benefit starts decreasing when you earn over £50,000 a year, which means that if you've got three kids and you get a pay rise from £49,000 to £55,000, you'll actually be paying a higher marginal tax rate than someone on £300,000 a year. If you had eight kids, the marginal tax rate would exceed 100%, i.e. you'd take home more than a £50,000 pre-tax salary than at 60 k The UK's VAT regime is also too complicated. VAT, or value-added tax, is a consumption tax on goods and services that's levied at each stage of the supply chain. Calculating VAT is complicated enough already, but the UK has an astonishing number of exemptions and reductions. Some of these are patently ridiculous. Gingerbread men, for example, are exempt from VAT as long as the chocolate decoration only has eyes, but if it has a smile, it's 20%. Thousands of hours are spent on these regulations, and they make the UK's VAT regime both less comprehensible and easier to abuse. Clearly, the UK's tax system is neither as progressive nor as effective as it could be. Whether this changes will depend on the political confidence of an incoming Labour government, but if done well, a new tax system could go some way to remedying the UK's economic woes. Now, you just spent around 8 minutes watching a video to help you learn about the world around you. And that feels good, right? Well, that's the feeling you get from spending time learning and bettering yourself. And if you want to do this more, then we have good news. Long-term supporter of the channel Brilliant are giving the first 200 people who sign up using our link 20% off their annual premium subscription. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform which is full of all kinds of courses which can help you improve your career and further improve your understanding of the world. They have more than 100 courses on everything from predicting with probability to how technology works to the concept of infinity. And these may sound like topics that you need to dedicate a lot of your time to, but you really don't. You can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day, and you can do this anywhere, anytime. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Brilliant for supporting TLDR.